attacking the city. Not on my watch, you're not. Here. Crap. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're diving into the sweet polygonal action of the Nintendo 64, the most powerful home console at the time that was called the N64. <laughs> um, the N64, I've talked about this before, is sort of one of my own gaming blind spots. I never owned one back in the day, I was more of a Sony boy. Hopped on the PS1 bandwagon, as did about 100 or 200 million other people at the time. And yeah, I kind of never went back. It took me a long time. In fact, I don't, I, I would say I've never gotten back into Nintendo consoles the way I was into them in the era of NES and Super Nintendo. Like I've played GameCube, I've played Wii, I owned a Wii U for Mario Maker, and I bought a Switch for the next Mario Maker, but. Admittedly, I played very little Wii U, and I don't even know where my Switch is right now. It's in a box somewhere. And I never owned a GameCube and a Wii, so really, you know, my heyday, my own heyday was the NES and Super Nintendo. So whenever I go back and play one of these N64 games, it's like a, a totally new experience for me. I know of Rogue Squadron. I was a big uh, fan of the original Star Wars trilogy. Uh, I won't say anything more than that. Uh, but, and I knew this game at the time, people liked it, and I just never played it. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and experience this baby for the first time. It looks like, in this demo at least, that, uh, we're gonna get to fly around Hoth, maybe shooting some Banthas, slaughtering some worthless Tuscans, you know, uh, all the good stuff that you want to do in a Star Wars game. Slaughter innocents and save the universe. Um, biographies... Interesting. Wedge Antilles. Hey, look, Wedge Antilles. Always knew that guy's name, never really knew who he was in the whole series. He was sort of just there. Wedge Antilles. He's just there. Dak? He's also just there. Luke seems to be friendly with him, then he dies. Don't know who Hobby is, never heard of this guy. They made him up, he, he doesn't exist. I'm willing to, to bet. Zev also does... Oh, wait, maybe I recognize him from the movie. Man, imagine being in a movie in the 70s, and then, like, 30 years later, your your face is in a video game, like... And, and you were a background character. You weren't even, like, the main guy. That would be kind of wild. Um, anyway, all right. Rogue Squadron... There's Luke looking all confused and naive as he uh, as he was in his early days. He became a total Jedi badass, but he started off not knowing what's what. So we'll go ahead and enter our name. Our name in honor of Luke. How about we be Juke? It's like combining J and Luke together. We're mashing ourselves up. Oh, we don't even get an E. <laughs> I'm Juck. I'm gaming Juck. It's a very Star Warsy name. In Star Wars, everyone's name is like one or two syllables, and they're random. Like Han, and then his last name, Solo, and then Luke, and Fett, and Boba. You know, like, it's it's all just like one-syllable names. Not that my name, Jay, is more than one, but you guys pay no attention to my mindless ramblings. Um... All right, ambush at Moss Eisley. Let's do it. Are we the ambushers or the ambushies? Does it matter? Level description. Take an early morning run and keep your eyes open for any suspicious activity. I mean, it's it's a worthless crime planet at the edge of the universe. I'm pretty sure everything's suspicious on this planet. You got a couple of weird space slugs peddling drugs. And hiring bounty hunters to slaughter the locals. Is that suspicious or is that just a day on Tatooine? Who knows? Okay. If you go into a Star Wars Rogue Squadron game and you don't pick an X-Wing, there's something wrong with you. Or actually, the speeders do look pretty cool too. Oh, we passed right over the Millennium Falcon. The Y-Wings actually don't look that... Terrible either. I've never heard of this before. A V-Wing. Now, that's definitely made up. The X-Wing, though, is iconic. 
Um, something else is kind of funny is, have you ever noticed that all Star Wars spaceships are just named after the shapes they make? X-Wings make an X. The Y-Wings over here are shaped like a Y. TIE Fighters are shaped like a gentleman's tie. You know, like... <laughs> it, if you pause and think about it, the, the whoever's inventing spaceships in the Star Wars universe is just very literal. They're like, what does this shape... This, this, this makes an S. It's an S-Wing. You know? Or this this shape looks like a pen, or this ship looks like a pen. It's a pen fighter. Not a lot of not a lot of inventiveness in the ship names, but it works. It works. The X wing, of course, is just so iconic. Star Wars. Welcome to Wars in the Star. Every Star Wars video game and movie ever has to start with that boom in your face. But I guess all the new Disney things are not doing that. But this is like classic Star Wars. Six months have passed since the Battle of Yavin. The Death Star has been destroyed, but the fight... Oh, this is post Return of the Jedi, eh? Or no, this is post uh, original. This is pre-Empire Strikes Back, I guess. As the war against the Empire rages across the vastness of space, Luke Skywalker forms a legendary Rogue Squadron. Does he? Because that Rogue Squadron movie told us that uh, Jin, whatever her face was, started it. I guess that's a retcon, though. Their mission to defend the struggling Rebel Alliance against the still powerful, battle-hardened Imperial foe in a last-ditch effort to control the galaxy. It's funny we associate these space scroll scroll texts with Star Wars, but I'm pretty sure they originally started in like Flash Gordon and George Lucas just totally ripped it off for Star Wars. But then it's, it's like Star Wars became the Star Saga. And it's like Flash Gordon was the originator, but it's it seems quaint now compared to Star Wars, which was so much more developed. Um, anyway, here we go to Tatooine. The most important, unimportant planet in the universe. Tatooine is supposed to be some sort of just random backwater planet that nobody cares about, yet it features in every Star Wars movie, TV show, video game, franchise, every major character that has ever been in Star Wars has gone to Tatooine, so... Yeah, unimportant, in quotes. And the legendary what Rogue Squadron is here, doing a little bit of, uh... I don't know what we're doing. Scaring the locals, I guess. Okay, how do we shoot? Okay, there's the shoot button. Boom! Eat it, probe droids. Are, are droids sentient? Did we ever figure that out in Star Wars? They're always kind of treated just like glorified iPhones, but... Like, 3PO had feelings. What am I shooting at? Stuff. Alright, that was either a droid or somebody's uh, vapor farm, which means it was their only source of income in this world. And either way, I'm happy with what I, what I chose to do there by shooting it. Okay. There's a bunch of droids over here. Hey, you guys, you missed all these droids. I hope these are Imperial probe droids, not like, uh, you know, some farmer's, you know, et protocol and etiquette droid. You know, here's another thing about Star Wars. It doesn't make a lot of sense when you think about it. In the original Star Wars, 3PO and... Oh, there's a, a, a Jawa Sandcrawler. Let's mess them up. Um, 3PO and R2 land on Tatooine, and they're trying to get away, and Jawas capture them. Fair enough. Um, and then the Jawas take all these droids to, uh, uh, to the, uh, you know, Skywalker Ranch to try and sell them. And, uh, the, I guess on the Skywalker Ranch they farm water or moisture or something like that. Definitely not doing anything with dignitaries or, or uh, you know, any sort of foreign, uh, political alliances. And yet, uh, Luke's dad buys a protocol droid. A little odd. Oh, is this a Sarlacc pit? It's hanging out. That totally looks like a Sarlacc pit. Whoa, is this Jabba's palace? Well, this is all... I didn't realize everything was, like, so near it, 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 one another. And I guess we are flying around in a, uh, a spaceship. Maybe we're going through, uh, maybe it, like, takes days to get from Jabba's Palace to the Sarlacc Pit. We're doing it in, like, two seconds, because we're in a starship. 
Um, I think there's a line in the movie where it's like, uh, you know, he even says, I don't have any need for, like, a protocol droid, but 3PO can talk to, like, uh, moisture evaporator computers or something, so he buys them, but... I mean, I guess it makes sense when you think about it, but it is also sort of funny to think it's like it, it's like the equivalent of somebody who farms pigs hiring like an ambassador to work on their farm and not to help with the pigs, but to like, I don't know, mend fences. <laughs> it, it's just a funny thought. There's like a protocol droid. Also, it is kind of an interesting thought to think about in the Star Wars universe. There were literally droids designed to teach you about protocol or manage your protocol. It's like a Downton Abbey droid. You know, like, it tells you how far away to put the spoons and forks and it dresses you in a tuxedo and it, like, knows the proper way to greet, you know, dignitaries from Japan and stuff. It, it like, I've no other sci-fi franchise has, like, a droid that's, like, so hyper-specific to, like, the upper class. Kind of weird, actually, when you think about it. I mean, I love 3PO. He's a great character. Um, in the original series, I was uh, a fan of 3PO. I thought he was pretty funny and stuff, but... Yeah. Hey, there's Luke's speeder. A lot of Easter eggs on this level here. Um, what, what is my mission right now? I, oh, I think I just launched a bomb. Oh, look, you can go into, like, speed mode. Okay. We even got some, uh, original Star Wars music in the background. Which nothing beats it. I kind of just want to stop talking. Okay, here's some dudes over here. What are they doing? What are you guys saying, huh? Oh, hello. Thought you could get away from me, eh? Are you bad or... What? I don't know. I'll take you down anyway. There we go. Good or bad, you're coming with me. The good thing is I killed them in a canyon, so if those were civilians, nobody has to know about it. Okay. Oh, you can change your view. That's cool. What view is this? This is like watching from the ground. Kind of a neat, like, cinematic view, but terrible to try to play the game this way. Hey, somebody's flying around on that speeder. Um, okay. What are the other buttons do? That, like, makes me move really far away. Oh, God. Okay. I don't know what that just did. What is my mission? Protect the homesteads. Protect Mos Eisley. Wait, Mos Eisley's here? Okay, well, I protected the homesteads. Okay, let's just... Uh, Pick a direction to fly in. How about this? Or is is the orange telling me which way to go? How about I follow the orange? That might be... Uh, oh! Mos Eisley. We found it! Oh, right. There's TIE Fighters that showed up. I forgot. Oh, they're blowing stuff up! Stop it! How many times do we have to defeat you guys? We blew up your Death Star. Isn't that enough? Shouldn't you guys like be terrified of us now and just give up? I got an idea, but we fire a missile. Oh, I think one just went down. There goes another one. Why are we protecting Mos Eisley anyway? Isn't it like a wretched hive of scum and villainy? Do we do we want to be protecting Mos Eisley? Yeah, how do I slow down? Okay, that's how you slow down. Okay, trying to aim. Forgive me, I fly like a drunken sailor. Oh, here we go. Nope. <laughs> Where are these guys? Go, go, go. Shoot him. Shoot him, Duke. Duke Sky Marshal, at your service, sir. Definitely didn't change my name in order to resemble our beloved General Luke Skywalker. I'm not a fanboy. I promise. These are hard to hit. There we go. One down. Ah, your terrible plan of flying in a circle while I shoot at you failed. Go back to the Empire and tell them Duke sent ya. Bah! There we go. Hey, we did it. We're heroes. We did it! We saved Moss Eisley! 
Nice work, Rogue Squadron. We might make a name for ourselves after all. Yay, we saved a haven of crime lords. Yes! Mission complete. The glory is ours. Six minutes, 54 seconds, which is a minute, almost two minutes above a bronze. So we, we got some work to do in terms of our ability. Accuracy was 8%. We only needed five, so we were great there. Then we killed 29 enemies. We only had to kill 27. Sweet. All right. Well, didn't even qualify for third place. But whatever. Escort valuable rebel supplies. Rendezvous on Bakarash. Rendezvous is spelled weird. Have eh? you ever noticed that? What's Zed doing in there? You get out of there, Zed. The French word, actually. Fun fact, if you actually think about the English language, our most fancy words are all French. Establishment. Uh, dignitary. Um, education. You might not think of education as a French word, but... You can look up the genesis of, like, English words, and there's, like, a lot of, like, basic English words, like, like, bread and stuff. Um, and those were words that existed in English before the French invaded and took over England. Then when the French invaded, then all these, like, every, any word that ends in M-E-N-T, like, government. That's a French word, which has just been in English so long we don't even think about it. I'm totally going x again, by the way. But that's why rendezvous is spelled all weird, because it's actually a French word. Just happened to end up in English because the French conquered uh, England at one point. So there you go. Off we go to another glorious space battle where Jay will regale us with more tales of grammar and language. One of our shuttles will rendezvous with a small convoy from local resistance on Barkash, which must first travel through Imperial territory. They carry equipment and supplies vital to the rebellion. Your mission is to rendezvous with that convoy and escort it to the landing zone. Good luck. All right. Captain or whoever you were. I will... will obey. We've already got trouble. Probe droids. Take your targets and go. Probe droids. So, not being an N64 game guy, um, I have no idea how this game stacks up to the big... The big elephant in the room when it comes to flying games on the N64, not elephant in a bad way, but uh, Star Fox. Star Fox 64, I know, is considered like one of the best N64 games, certainly one of the best flying and shooting games. Um, and so, I mean, I'm playing this right now. I feel like the controls in this are like pretty solid. We've only done one level so far, but so far I feel like this is pretty good. Um, we'll see as it goes on. Maybe my opinion will change. But uh, right now, my opinion is good. Um, and I think we did play N64 already on this channel. Or not N64. Star Fox 64. And I honestly don't really 100% remember it. But now I'm kind of thinking, like, compared to... Compared to that... Oh, those are good guys. Who, who are they shooting at? Who's the bad guy? Shooting at someone. There's someone over there? I see no one, guys. Oh, nope. There is somebody over there. Hold on. There we go. Oh, look at you! I'm so bad at flying games. Following my radar in 360 does not just... Just... My brain doesn't think that way. There you go. We got gotcha. you. Um, anyway, we might have played Star Fox 64. I don't fully remember, but I certainly can't conjure up my mind how good it was compared to this so it kind of makes me wonder like game seems decent how does it stack up against Star Fox 64 for those of you guys who were uh, N64 players back in the day like what do you what do you guys remember about it like was there a debate that some people like this more than Star Fox 64 oh my god walkers okay I turn back to fight one group Oh, God. Okay, well, well, you know what? We served the gods there. kamikaze I turn around for two seconds, and all of a sudden there's walkers taking you guys out. Hey, we got extra lives in this? It's sweet. I thought we would just, like, play the level over. Sucker, you suck. Don't be so bad. Go, 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 go. Kill this damn thing. 
I want a button to just pause in the sky where I am. That's the thing about, so I'm a first person shooter guy, but the thing about uh, first person shooters is you can literally just stop walking, you can aim at someone, you can shoot until they're dead. With flying games, you always gotta like do a second pass around. Inconvenient. I wanna go faster. Oh look, there's another thing over here. There's this stuff everywhere, man. My wingmen are clearly as useless as the Star Fox wingmen. They're not doing jack. I wish one of my wingmen would pop up and go bloop bloop, help me, bloop bloop. Slippy style. We need some slippy style wingman saves in this game to really elevate it to the level of Star Fox, I think. But yeah, anyway, compared to Star Fox 64, where's this game stack up? You guys let me know in the comments. I'm clueless. Gaming J, effing clue. Could be my tagline of my series. He tries. Oh, does he try? Some games I know a lot about. Not N64. Stop dropping bombs! That is being a jerk. There you go. It's, it is satisfying when you take those TIE fighters out, because they do crash like in the movies, where it's like they start spinning out of control. You imagine the pilots on the inside like, Bleh! and they like crash into a mountain and explode. Oh, look at this. When did the Empire have time to set up a bunch of turrets on, like, a supply run route that presumably the Rebels have established? Like, is this a new route? Did Maybe before we ran the convoy, we should have flown around and taken out all the turrets? Was this amateur hour? Rebellion being run by a bunch of disorganized hippies? Thought we had military planners on this, man. Stay with the supply vehicle. Oh, is it? Wouldn't want me going ahead and actually uh, clearing things out. Alright, where's the stupid supply vehicles? Getting destroyed. Oh, they're way back here. Oh, look! They are getting destroyed. Oh, there you go. Kaboom! Just like in the movies, I like that. One scene I always liked in Return of the Jedi was uh, when there was like that one A-wing pilot or, or whatever. Who was like going down? He was like, Wah! and he crashed into like the bridge of a star destroyer and took the whole thing out. And it's like, yeah, that solid one, buddy. Thanks for taking one for the team. Like he died, it sucked, but he took out a whole star destroyer. That was pretty cool. And then where they destroyed a star, de another star destroyer, and it like started to crash and it went into the Death Star and caused massive damage. That was cool too. There's some there's some cool moments in those Star Wars space battles. Believe it or not, a movie called Star Wars did space battles pretty well. Mission complete. Oh, if we destroyed one more enemy, we would have gotten silver. And I was just, I was in the middle of destroying enemies and they called me back. I think my commander just didn't want me to get uh, too many medals. For some reason. Race against time to recover the crew and cargo of a downed rebel ship. Okay. Search for Nuna. It's weird that we started on Tatooine. Totally iconic planet. And now we're just like on like nowhere planets. Okay, now we're being recommended to take uh, the speeder, I guess. Which we will. Or is it the A-Wing? Oh, they want us to take the A-Wing. I don't want the speeder, but whatever. The speed, does this thing even operate in space? I don't think it can, it just, it's a ground level thing. Like, why is it in the, the space bay? If you take it and you go to fly it, I imagine you fly out of the space bay and you just like fall into space. Because the thing is supposed to like hover over a planet, not actually go out into space. Off we go. I've never flown an A-Wing before. This is a new experience for me. Are they good? A rebel ship called the Nona recently crashed somewhere in this vicinity. Oh, look, there's a rebel ship that's crashed. Soldiers and stolen Imperial equipment. You must find them before the Imperials do. All right, we got to find this. These guys. Rescue them. Bring them back. Guys, they're coming in fast. 
TIE Fighters. Coming in. Oh, God, we crashed into one. The guys are already getting hit and going down. Good. Oh. Is it bad that I'm totally disregarding those instructions? Bunch of probe droids. I'm gonna take out these TIE Fighters, man. Come fight me like men. Oh, I got one. Oh, you can just hold the button. So far, the A-Wing just feels like a smaller, weaker, crappier X-Wing. And these guys are, like, ignoring me. Like, am I not worth the bullets? What's happening here? Oh, here's a guy. You wanna fight me? Nobody wants to fight me. Like, not even worth it. Um, hold on, I want to check the controls. No, nothing we can do right now. Um, after this level, I want to check the controls, because I'm pretty sure we have, like, a bomb button, and I'm not using it, and I want to make sure that I do do that. Let's see, I guess. All right, nobody wants to fight. <laughs> Riveting space battle here. All the enemies just totally flee. And as you appear, where's... Okay, somebody just flew over me or something. Now they're just making fun of me. Hey, here's a guy. Can we kill this guy? Are we allowed to kill him? And off he flies into the horizon. Luna is reporting that they're under attack. Okay. Here's some guys down here. Nope. Nothing to do with me. I think a probe droid or something. Oh, here's a guy, finally! Oh, we crashed into him! Yes! Whatever, I'll take it. <laughs> Uh, here's some probe droids. All right, here's some easy targets. There you go. All right, I guess uh, we're supposed to go this way. I don't know how to go faster though. This button. There we go. I'm just gonna leave. The, you know what? I tried to f kill you guys, but you guys didn't want to tangle with me, so I'm just leaving them to to be over this way. Oh shoot! <laughs> Whoops. First of all, was that a guy on our side? And second of all, either way, oops. Okay. Uh, we finally got some enemies that we can see. Kill these guys. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Corner. There we go. Took them all down. Oh, some more TIE fighters are on their way. These are the Windsor not uh, models. Tell because they're double chambered. Uh, what? Is this is this a bad guy? We destroy this? I don't know what's going on. Hey, stop dropping bombs! One hallmark of early polygonal shooter games like this is that the terrain is often just random textured hills and there's really not much else going on. There's no trees, very few buildings. Is this guy going down or what? Am I even damaging him? Oh, there we go. Aha! So you can be killed after all. Oh, there we go. Yeah, like, if you look at the train, it's, like, just basically random hills. Oh, I've never seen these before. Those those are kind of cool, actually. I wonder if those existed as a toy in the 70s. There were so many more Star Wars things in toy form that never made it to movie form. Like, of course, like, the AT-AT and the, like, Imperial Walker, like, the normal things from the movies were toys. And then there were also toys that were never in the movies. I remember that. As a kid, I had a lot of Star Wars toys. I think because my parents liked Star Wars, they got me Star Wars stuff, so I had like a Jabba the Hutt. Uh, and he had like a throne that he sat on. I had a Rancor. As I think about it, those are awesome toys. I wish I still had them, but... Um, and I had like Luke and uh, a bunch of others. I had a lot of Return of the Jedi toys, now that I think about it. 
It was a lot of Tatooine themed Return of the Jedi. It was like Luke with his lightsaber, Jabba a Rancor. I had a handful of Jabba's henchmen from the the sand barge or whatever. Um, I think I had an R2. Like over time, like as a kid, you just lose toys. Like over time, these things like all one by one got lost or did damage and destroyed. It's funny because like I really didn't value them too much as a kid. I was just like, oh, these are cool. These are my toys, whatever. Um, but now as I'm older, I'm like, oh man, that'd be kind of cool to have those things. Although as I get even older, I'm like, but why? <laughs> I'm like going through cycles of like, I want my toys. I don't, I don't, I wish I had them. I don't care. Um, yeah, I mean like, I guess if I really think about it, what would I do if I had those things? I wouldn't be playing with them. They would just like sit in a box somewhere. And we just lose. And we just lost. They were just sitting in a box somewhere and I wouldn't really do anything with them. Mission failed. Oh, we get no medal for that. Because we suck. Okay, hold on here. I think the critical thing that we're missing is how to use bombs. If we knew how to use bombs, um, then I think we could figure stuff out. So let's go in, let's mess with our controls a bit. Let's figure out what the A-Wing is supposed to do. Game over. Game over, man. Game over. Like Hudson from Aliens. I don't know. Is it lame if I mention my references or should I just make them and not say anything? Juke. Okay, hold on. Go back. No options. And here we go. Uh, okay, switch view, brakes, and roll. Oh, you can roll? Fire secondary, fire mode. Special. Fire blasters, thrust. What is fire mode? Okay. So there's no, like, lock on or anything. Oh, fire mode might be it. Special. We should also try rolling. I can remember all this. All right. Well, that was helpful. I thought there was like a lock on button that I was clearly missing, but I, I am not. All right, Juke is going back into action. A search for Nona. Time to recover the crew and cargo of a down All right, we're going in, we're going in. Secondary weapon is missile. Oh, okay. So maybe they just automatically lock on or something? I we will see. Rogue Squadron, this is General Riken. Okay. Skip that intro there. Go into firing mode. Coming in fast. Doesn't seem to do anything. Oh. Up, rogue. Aha! There. Look like two of those guys down right away. Three of them. All right. You tell me what's going on. I'm a lot better. Turns out. Oh, here we go. Two more. Yes. Juke's angry for vengeance. Oh God. Look, my ship is just flying really fast, though. Okay, we have lost everyone. That's not a good sign. Fly back and find some people. We've taken out like five or six ships, though. I feel like we're doing pretty good. Feeling much more confident this time around. Oh, here we go. Oh, there's a uh, droid. Ow. Oh no! Okay, crashing into even a probe droid seems like a bad idea. Okay, we get to continue, right? Yeah. 
five. Here we go. Probe droid after probe droid is just falling. A copy. Ouch. Shields are a little weak. All right. Oh, here's where we gotta go. Firing missiles missed. It was a miss aisle. I will be here all day, folks. Okay, missed that one. Okay, here we go, lining it up. Firing the missile. Missed! <laughs> Jeez, that's embarrassing. There's not even a point to firing another one because, uh... Probably so weak, he's just gonna go down a few blaster hits here. Or not. Okay, there he goes. You go. You go. A perfect strafing run there. Alright, here come the winds and knots. Where are ya? Comes a couple. Down you go. Boom. Kaboom! Oh, that was so super sweet. There's more guys coming out. Okay, missile. Didn't do anything! I think it went between his legs! Oh, come on, get him. One more hit and he's gone. Yes. Oh, where are you? Right on your tail, buddy. Right on your tail. Down he goes. Okay, we gotta get these stupid walkers. Well, not stupid. They're actually pretty cool looking. Oh, wait, that's a dead one. <laughs> well played. Camouflaging yourself behind the corpse of your already defeated ally. Tactic I respect. Woo. Okay. I gotta focus on these bombers, because I think they're the ones that are destroying the ship. So, there's one guy over there and one guy over there. I think this is the last flying guy. Where are ya? They like to sh bomb ships, eh? Well, I like to bomb you. Down you go! Hey, there's a, a guy over here. Couple of random probe droids. This guy, a random probe droid. Okay, I think I got lured away from the main area here. Oh. Here you go. You know what, once you get the hang of the controls for this, I feel like this is, like, actually not too bad. Like, I've definitely played space shooter games where I'm way more lost. <laughs> Uh, again, I just, I, I find it harder to aim in 3D than just to aim in a first-person shooter. But I think there's also a bit of auto-aiming going on here, which I appreciate. Uh, maybe the hardcore, you know, fighter, gamer people wouldn't, but I appreciate it. I don't think there's anyone else. I'll try firing a missile at this thing here. This thing is bad, right? Fire. Nothing. Okay, I'm just wasting. Oh god! <laughs> I saw that coming. Hey, their ship is moving though. Okay, let's uh get this guy down once and for all. Where is he? I have you now, Darth Vader style. All right, we didn't fail this time around, even though we died twice. Still somehow a success. So I'm okay with that. Are there any other enemies to destroy? What do we have to do now? Nothing. Locate the rebel ship and protect it. Mission, can I just eject now? Mission accomplished. Just flying around for funsies. Oh, I have to go somewhere else. Okay, I see. We're gonna go this way now. Oh! What the heck? What are you shooting at my ship? Oh, there are guys. 
Never mind. We've just lost contact with the shuttle. Are you serious? Did I just lose again? <laughs> Damn it. Alright, third time's the charm, right? Game over. So, why put a game over screen in a game that doesn't have like actual game over? That's that's kind of an odd choice, I feel. They're like, you failed, game over. Oh, but do you want to just play that level again? Like, then we have to go back to the main menu, select a save account. Like, why not just have a retry option, you know? That's one thing I'm noticing about this game. It almost seems like a relic of the previous generation of consoles. Like, I was talking about how, like, you know, the N64 came out after Super Nintendo. I didn't follow the N64. But in the Super Nintendo era, definitely if you died, it was like game over, back to the title screen, restart. But this game, you have a save file at the mission that you just failed, and you can go back to it. So why make the player look at a game over screen, feel bad, go to the main menu, select a save game, go into it, let, you know, like just re retry. You know, retry or quit. Hell, even Mario Kart on the N64 had a retry or quit option. Maybe it's not a relic, maybe it's just like a weird design choice. That wasn't really thought out well. Um, either way... I'm gonna get these guys this time. I know how to fly now, bitches. Where are you guys? Where did you all go? Alright, I'm gonna hunt you down like a dog. Alright, who's next? Who's next? I see somebody over here wants to die. Oh, here you go. We're hunting you down, buddy. Oh, yeah. You know, once you do get the hang of this, it's like, it actually is kind of fun to, like, find guys and hunt them down and chase them down and stuff, Star Wars style. Yeah. TIE Fighters are very satisfying to shoot down. I always felt like TIE Fighters were a bit of a dime a dozen, you know? Like... When the Rebels went into battle, they only had like 20 X-Wings, and the Empire had like 2,500 TIE Fighters. But the X-Wings always held their own. I always felt like TIE Fighters were like crap. Um, they looked cool and stuff, but they were just like paper mache, you know? Whereas like an X-Wing was like, an X-Wing can like hold its own, you know? You should fear the X-Wing. I don't know if that's accurate or not, or like the rebel pilots were just like way more experienced or something, but it does, does it always seem like there were thousands of TIE fighters, but they didn't do anything, whereas like 10 X-Wings were like, you know, taking care of business. You don't later on destroy my shuttle. Right, what do we got going on over here? Uh-huh. Okay, missiles. The missiles, I fired four missiles at that guy. Didn't do a goddamn thing. That is unbelievable. What is the point of missiles? What what function do they serve in this world? Alright, you guys are dead. Fighters inbound. Good thing I'm really good at killing these guys. Over here. You go. So I think, uh, so here's the problem, the, the mistake I was making early on in this game, is I was holding down the, like, slow down button so I could, like, stay in place, and then I was like, oh, the enemies are, like, flying away from me. All you need to do is, like, actually accelerate after the enemies, and you will catch them. And now I'm slowing down to let this guy pass me. Now I'm going normal speed. I'm right on his tail. So yeah, like once you once you get a handle on that, I mean, it's super obvious stuff. But once you clue into that fact, oh, we can do a barrel roll, right? Somehow, it's not happening. I don't know. There's a barrel roll in there somewhere. But anyway, once you clue into the super obvious fact of how to actually control your ship, then it is a lot easier to kill these guys. Because you can actually chase them and stuff. Oh, I can't hit this guy, though. I'm gonna get a bit closer. Over here. Oh! We're too close. 
Got him once. Jesus, this guy's hard to hit. There we go. I'm, I'm positive this game has a lot of auto aim. It's like... It just feels like it is. Where is this guy? Would you care to die already, so... I feel like last time I was doing way better. I'm kind of sucking this time. I'm concerned that my ship is going to be destroyed soon. Yeah, look at... What? What? Look at all these guys having a shooting party here. There we go. Some of the riffraff. Okay, here. Here. Anyone else? All right, we gotta kill these high fighters. Where are you guys? You go. And oh god. We've just lost contact with the shuttle. Are you serious? We just lost contact again? <laughs> Oh, God. All right, I'm looking up cheat codes. There are cheat codes in this game. Hilariously, we can't beat the third level. And I was really trying there. I was really trying. Um, but in the interest of just moving on to one more level. Uh, let's see here. Star Wars Rogue Squadron for N64. Um, let's see. Here are some cheat codes. Oh, here's a cool one. You can actually turn on the Millennium Falcon. Let's see about this. So hold on. Um, where do you put the cheat codes? I think you have to put them in the main menu. Okay, so the board. Yes, we've we failed enough of this. You know what? Maybe if we had the Millennium Falcon, this level would be a lot easier. Maybe it's still going to be impossible. Escort missions. Am I right, guys? They're like the bane of existence in video games. The thing with escort missions is you're responsible for somebody else's responsibility. You know, somebody else's health. And that's that. That just sucks in life in general. Nobody wants that. Um. Passcodes. Wookie Pelt, apparently, is the code that we want. Uh, okay. W. Nope. Jeez, what is happening here? W. <laughs> okay, hold on. Why am I in back? Jesus. What? What is happening? <laughs> My controller's screwed up. Doesn't want me to enter the code. Wookie... There's not going to be enough room. Okay, Wookie Pelt is the actual code. P. E. This isn't going to work. No, okay, hold on. There's another code here for it. P. K. P. E K. D. Um, w. X. It just also seems like. There's not enough, uh, letters. W. It's like when you get a phone number, you know, like you meet a girl at a bar, she gives you a phone number, and it's like five digits, and you realize that it's fake. <laughs> oh, crap, and I hit back by accident. Okay, let's do this again. Okay. Enter code. Did that do anything? Um, okay. wonder if there's a, a cheat code to unlock all levels. Okay, there is one that unlocks all the bonus missions, so let's just do that real quick. W, I, M, P, Wimp, Ami, A, M, I, A, M, 
Hi. Okay. Did, did that do anything? Let us find out. Go into Rogue Squadron here. I have a feeling it didn't actually do anything. I don't know what if these passwords are legit or what. But uh I don't seem to be able to select any other mission. And for instance, if we pick this or rendezvous at Bikesh. Or this. Race against time to recover. Let's just see if the Millennium Vulcan happens to be unlocked. I have a feeling it definitely is not going to be. Peter. You son of a bitch. Alright, well... Uh, let's just go back into combat and... I'm just gonna... Uh, we're not even gonna pass this level. We're going to, uh, you know... Uh, just sort of chat about the game from here. Star Wars Rogue Squadron for the N64. Um, I think it is like a solid game, actually. As I say, the, the mechanics and the shooting actually have grown on me a little bit. I uh, think it's satisfying to shoot down these TIE Fighters. I think as far as an early polygonal shooting game goes, this one is is very playable, enjoyable. Um, the, one in, the one hitch we're encountering is that level 3 here sucks. It sucks. I, I guess I'm doing something totally wrong. I'm, I'm not protecting my ship. But it's like when you got to chase these guys down to actually get them. You know. Oh, God. Uh, and then, like, you, you're busy chasing these guys down and your ship gets destroyed. Like, I don't know. I just... I don't like the fact that we have to protect the ship in this level. In this early, early level. Um, and it's like you only get one shot. And... The other thing is there's no checkpoints. I feel like in a modern game, this would have checkpoints. So if you survive the first wave, then, you know, you would hit a checkpoint. And then if you died, the ship got destroyed, you would just go back to the end of the first wave. Then if you make it through the second wave and then the ship got destroyed, you go back to the end of the, the second one. You know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't have to go re redo the whole level. So having to redo the whole level is just a bit tiresome here. So I, I'm not a fan of this level. I think this level sucks. Um... But as far as the game goes, um, I think the game is pretty cool. I, I, I'm looking at the cheat codes here. Apparently, you can eventually pilot, or this might be a cheat code. I don't know if you can actually unlock it. Like the Millennium Falcon, I think you can legit unlock. But you can also pilot an ATST on some levels. If, this, if these cheat codes are to be believed, which they didn't work, so I don't know if they are or not. But it seems like there's a lot of cool Star Wars references in here, a lot of cool vehicles. If you like any of the Star Wars Rogue Squadron flying games previously, and you never had a chance to check this one out, maybe you also missed the N64 back in the day, I would say give this one a shot. You know, as a non-N64 guy, uh, this one actually still is, is quite enjoyable and uh, quite fun, so... Yeah, I don't know. Those are my thoughts. What do you guys think of Star Wars Rogue Squadron here? Is it a game that you would recommend? Is it a game that you never would? Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, I hope that uh, whatever you think of the game here uh, today was interesting and entertaining for you. If it was, don't forget to like the video and all this stuff. And I will be back ready to lose again in a new game in a couple of days. So uh, until then, my friends, you all take care of yourselves. Protect those troop transports. And peace.